Now, you were there doing more than just observing them anthropologically. You were mostly doing these sort of metabolic studies, right? Looking at their resting energy expenditure. So let's let's move into this this yeah. conversation because it's quite fascinating and has a lot of relevance for discussions of obesity. Mm -hmm. um, so what were you doing there and then what did you find and what was surprising about it? Yeah, so this is sort of, you know, uh, this, like you said earlier, is my specialty, is this sort of intersection of metabolism and human evolution. And the reason I'm interested in how the body burns calories is because, you know, life is a game of turning energy into kids, right? From an evolutionary point of view, that's where the rubber hits the road. That's what it's all about. Uh, and we had no data when we started this work uh, over a decade ago, I guess. We had no data on how your body burns calories in a hunting and gathering lifestyle. And, you know, nobody's ever gone and measured it with living hunter gatherers before. Uh, and so we took uh, the doubly labeled water method to the field. So if, if you don't know, you drink isotopically enriched water. So some of the water, some of the hydrogens are deuterium. Some of the oxygens are oxygen 18. And we can use those isotopes as, as tracers basically to, to trace your body flushing out um, hydrogens, which it loses as water, as H2O in the water, and how you lose um, oxygens out of your body. And you lose the oxygens as water and as CO2. And so by subtracting the, the depletion rates of the H's and the O's, we can get to the CO2. So in other words, it's a really good physiological measurement of how much carbon dioxide your body's making every day, which is a, you know, essentially a direct measure of calories you're burning per day. And so we took this isotopically enriched water to the field, and we did this study. So you, you end up with a sort of 10-day long period where you're measuring um, energy expenditures in odds of men and women in this case. And uh, we had a really, you know, it gives you a really validated, accurate measurement of how many calories you burn every day. And the surprise was, of course, we, you know, we went there uh, thinking they're going to be these sky high daily energy expenditures because they're getting, you know, something like five times more activity every day than folks do in, in the U.S. and Europe. Um, so we were sure they would have really, really high metabolic rates. And they didn't. Their, their total energy expenditures were exactly the same. Um, as, you know, as folks in the U.S. and Europe. So that was like a total head scratcher. And, and it became this, you know, really important, I think, observation about how the body's trying to homeostatically, it seems, keep total energy expenditure kind of in a pretty narrow band in the same way that you try to keep, you know, body temperature in a pretty narrow band. Your body's actually trying to, to kind of clamp that and doesn't let it go too far either way. Um, and that's an important observation for how we think about how things like exercise affect you know, energy expenditure, affect energy deficits, affect weight. So there's a whole sort of, you know, set of consequences there. And it all started because we were interested as anthropologists in just this one data point, which is if you're in a hunter-gatherer, how many calories do you burn every day? Right. And so when I had a, I did a podcast recently with Stephen Gundry, and he talked about one of these papers you published. His theory, which I, I disagree with, and I think you would probably disagree with, was that oh, well, the Hadza are clearly burning more calories because they're walking around a bunch. And then the reason that the rest of us have such a high uh, caloric expenditure is because we have inflammation in our bodies. Yeah. And your, your ideas are sort of the reverse of that, that, that actually the body is trying to maintain a homeostasis, that it's not that the rest of us have high metabolism because we're inflamed. I mean, many of us are inflamed in the, in the general population, and we'll talk about that in relation to the processed food that we're eating. But that it sounds like, in reading your book, it sounds like you would not point to that inflammation as the reason that our metabolisms are elevated, but rather the fact that even though the Hadza are doing all of this extra work, their body is sort of down-regulating other things to keep it within a constrained region. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I guess, well, hmm, I could see people kind of not, not, yeah, so, I, yeah, so I think that, um, there's this sort of species specific evolved metabolic rate that we're kind of built to run at. And the reason I think that this is you know, an evolved thing is that if you look at humans, our metabolic rates are higher, for example, than chimpanzees. Even after you correct for body size and composition and activity levels and all that stuff, our metabolic rates have shifted about 20% higher. Chimpanzees are about 20% lower. Gorillas are a little lower than them, orangs below them. So you see, if you, if you work with metabolic rates and evolution, um, you see across species, you know, yes, bigger animals tend to burn more calories, but even once you account for body size, there's this variation, and evolution seems to have parked different species in different, different sort of places. Um, we seem to be parked at this, you know, 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day kind of place, depending on how big you are. Bigger people burn a little bit more calories than smaller people. Um, and then the question becomes, in my mind, how does the body burn those calories? Because it's going to burn them. And if you have a, you know, sort of a normal 
physiology for a human, which would be a hunting and gathering physiology, because that's how we're evolved. We're not evolved to be urbanites, right? Um, if you think about Hadza or any, any hunting and gathering group, it's actually what is sort of physiologically normal for humans, then you're spending, you're spending those calories largely on physical activity, right? And if you take that away, then the body's going to spend it on something, and it spends it on things like inflammation, or it spends it on things like stress reactivity, or it spends it on things like um, much higher s reproductive hormones, uh, for example. So Hadza men's testosterone levels are about half of what they are uh, for men in the U.S., even though uh, you could probably agree that the Hadza guys aren't, you know, <laughs> aren't suffering in terms of virility or whatever. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're tough guys. Um, so, you know, I, I think that, that exercise has this regulatory effect because within the kind of constraint, within kind of a fixed budget, if you're spending your calories on exercise, then you don't have those calories to sort of waste on other, this other stuff that actually can be detrimental.